Hello everyone, I'm Roland Spruill, and this edition of News Micro begins right now. Firefighters work to stop the Jake fire from spreading any further. With all the protests, rioting, and demonstrations occurring across the country from the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and many others, one unfortunate fallout is that occasionally journalists get arrested. And for one former College of the Canyon student turned video journalist, that nightmare became all too real. Kenya News reporter Philippe Gonzalez has the story. It was just another day at the office for former Canyons News journalist Jorge Ventura. Reporting from Louisville, Kentucky, Friday night, we wanted to give you guys a live look here at the scene at Jefferson Square Park. While spending most of the summer covering protests and riots all over our country, September 23rd had to be the most memorable night for Jorge. With the Attorney General making an announcement with regards to the Breonna Taylor case, civil unrest began early that day. You know, even even in the daytime around 2 o'clock, as reporters, we knew that, hey, the night is going to get interesting because over 10 people got arrested in the daytime. We had a clash. It, uh, you know, Wednesday night could get interesting. So Jorge and his colleague Shelby Talcott found themselves back at Madison Square Park later that night. With Kentucky State Police declaring an unlawful assembly at the park, Jorge and Shelby got trapped from all sides. Cops on each side and they just come in and come in and come in and they're just closing in on us and there's literally nowhere to go. So I, I try to avoid it, couldn't, couldn't avoid it, we get to the ground. I have a thing labeled on my bulletproof vest that says press in blue. And so I have my press thing on, I like take off the badge, I'm like waving it, you know, I'm trying to tell him, hey, this is a mistake. Jorge got arrested and spent the night in jail. He described the worst part about being in the cell was knowing he was there for doing his job. But Jorge won't let his arrest stop him from covering the stories that need to be told. I'm on the front lines of such a historic moment in our, in our country and, you know, telling the story, it's like, I mean, there's, to me, it's like, if, if just knowing that and if that doesn't wake you up and, and drive you, then... I mean, I don't, I don't think anything, anything can. For Canyons News, I'm Felipe Gonzalez. Last Wednesday, Governor Newsom signed one of the most talked about executive orders in California's history as part of the state's pursuit of zero emissions vehicles. But for some Santa Clarita residents, this order comes with many more questions than answers. It is amongst California's most ambitious efforts to curb greenhouse gas emissions and to reduce climate change. Last week, Governor Newsom signed an executive order that promises to change transportation here in California for years to come. That by 2035, in the next 15 years, we will eliminate in the state of California the sales of internal combustion engines. Governor Newsom says this initiative not only places California first in the nation in addressing climate change, but will make the Golden State a role model. We're advancing the cause with the support uh, of the California Air Resources Board to once again lead not only this nation, uh, but in many respects lead the world. But some Santa Clarita residents say those changes create some unanswered questions. I understand what he's trying to do. I understand he's trying to clean up the environment, clean up the, you know, the air. And I, I can appreciate that. I don't know how well it's going to go over overall. OK, well, what happens like if you have a job and we have all these like power shutdowns during summer when it's too hot and you can't charge your vehicle and how are you supposed to get to work? Now, according to the governor, you won't have to get rid of your gasoline-powered vehicle. You'll still be able to buy and sell them as pre-owned vehicles. You'll also be able to bring them from other states. You just won't be able to buy them here. He says that it's all about working towards overall elimination of greenhouse gases. But as you saw in this piece, so many people are worried about the impact of the state's already overtaxed electrical grid and public safety shutdowns during wildfires. And that is a wrap for this edition of News Micro. Be sure to watch all of our News Micros on YouTube. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.